everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video, I'm going to give you an orientation of our DaVinci MIDI controller for Stream Deck devices profile package. Now, I assume that you've gone through the PDF that was included in the download and followed the instructions on the installation there, or you've watched our installation video. And uh, if you have not, I have the link uh, in the description below. But once you're set up, this is the main page that you're presented with. Now I'm going to be uh, demonstrating this on an Excel device. Most of the functions are available on the 15 key, so you can follow along with, with no problem here. Additionally, I'll be demonstrating this on a Mac system, but all the features and functions are identical on the Windows profile. This is the main page of the profile that you'll be presented with, and I'll give you a quick rundown of, of what we've got here on this page. As you can see, I'm in DaVinci here, I'm in the edit page, and I've just got a, a, a simple music build project here. Just for demonstration purposes, it's easier to demonstrate this sort of layout, uh, but you can, of course, use this for any sort of project that you have in DaVinci that requires you to be mixing and balancing your audio. So where you do that, of course, is in the Fairlight room, so let's hop over to the Fairlight room, and this is where we'll spend our time in the demonstration. So on our Stream Deck profile here, you can see on this uh, layer of uh, buttons, we have uh, track selection uh, buttons, and they are identified by uh, the name of the track. And as the name suggests, clicking on one will select that track. And by selecting that track, that allows us to uh, mute or solo the track. These buttons over here on the far Right, if we have a track selected, and let's uh, zoom into our, so we can see our levels. Let's select our, uh, let's select our, our base grit track here. And by pressing these buttons, you can see we can increase and decrease the volume for that particular clip. It has no effect on the faders themselves. This is on a per clip basis. Now with the track selection, however, you will notice that we have tracks 1 to 8 are represented here. But in this current project, I have 12 tracks. So that's where the bank buttons come in. By hitting bank, I can move our focus instead of tracks 1 to 8. It'll give us tracks from 5 to 12. So you can see our guitar is our first track here followed by piano and shaker, etc. Hitting the bank back, now our first track, drums, is in track number one. In addition, we have a few uh, transport functions along the bottom here. And fast forward and reverse, go to end, go to beginning. We can apply a marker, make our in point, our out point, cut the clip, etc. And of course, snapping, linking, and our loop function. Now up along the top here, these three keys open up new pages for us. By clicking on the first one, this is our Mixer console page. And instead of having track selection, these are dedicated faders for each of the tracks that we've got in our project, one through eight currently. So of course, moving the faders up and down here, we'll move the faders up and down in the DaVinci application. And once again, the bank buttons will take us past our eight tracks to the next bank of eight tracks up to the maximum of what we've got in our project, which is currently 12. Over cells back, and we can control any of the faders on any of the currently available tracks. Of course, solos are available to us as well. A few transport functions along the top to help us out. And one thing I'd like to point out with the faders is the speed of these are adjustable. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. Let's hop over to the Stream Deck software, click on any one of these, and uh, we'll start with the bottom. And when you click on it, it shows you this dialog box, and there's a slider along the bottom here that you can adjust. So we can move our speed down a little bit to slow down the speed of the fader, and we want to do it to both the top and bottom keys here so that they'll match. So the bottom key obviously will 
will move the fader down and the top key moves it up. So we want them to be pretty close to the same. So now this is our this is our base clean track that we've just adjusted. So we go back over to DaVinci and when we move the base clean fader, you can see it moves a lot slower than it did before. I'll move the base grip beside it. You see it's moving much faster. Base clean, much slower. So you can adjust these to how you like to work. Let's go back and we'll go to the next page, which is which is mute solo arm. And this gives us the ability to mute solo or arm any of our currently available tracks. So if we want uh, with the drums here on the first track, we can mute solo and invoke recording there. Do that for any of the tracks. Once again, bank buttons as well gets us to the next set of eight tracks. So you can have as many tracks as you like in your project. Just keep banking through them to get to them. Transport functions along the top again. Back once more, we're going to go into the pan page. As the name suggests, this gives you pan options for each of the individual tracks. So in the drum track, we take a close look at that. Pressing the top key will pan right and the bottom key will pan left. Now one additional troubleshooting note you might encounter is that occasionally you might find that the Stream Deck uh, stops being responsive. Uh, the MIDI controls aren't working anymore and you get error messages like this or even the graphics don't show up where you'll see a, uh, a MIDI symbol uh, showing that the graphics are offline. Now this is a known problem with how Stream Deck uses MIDI and it hasn't been fixed yet. But there is uh, a, a very simple workaround to avoid this happening, and that is you should always try and have your Stream Deck directly connected to your computer. So don't use a USB hub. Go straight from the Stream Deck into the computer, and that tends to make a much more stable MIDI connection. So if you have to go through a USB hub, you probably are going to find that this will occasionally go offline on you. So the fix to get everything back online is very simple. You just go back to uh, Stream Deck software, go back into the store, and uh, into plugins, search for the MIDI again, click uninstall, wait for it to do the uninstall process, and then immediately install it again. Now you may find you'll have to restart Stream Deck. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So when you go back to your application, you'll find that things will work as they did before. And you have a functionality back. So that's a quick fix on that. But once again, the best approach is to make a direct connection from the Stream Deck to the computer and avoid using a USB hub for its connection. So that's it. That's all you need to know. I hope that really helps in your workflow and, and uh, makes your life in the studio a lot easier. Thanks once again. We'll talk to you soon.